excuse me, YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who follow it later. So, we are told to be courageous. What is it to be courageous? To be courageous is to have the courage to act when everyone else is hiding away. Being courageous is having the courage to act when everyone else is hiding away. We are told to not be afraid, to do not fear. Now, is it possible to not be afraid when everything else seems to be obviously against us? Is it possible to not be afraid, to take hold of your fear? Yes, it is. When you put your trust in the one who is in control over all things. Now, God is either in control of all things or he isn't. There can only be one of two things. And I believe in a God who is in control of all things. And therefore, trust in him is not difficult for me because I believe in a God who is in control of all things. He is working out his will, purpose and plans. And we are, as long as we're in line with him, we'll work out those plans as well. So God wants us to not be afraid. And we can be afraid, provided we are prepared to trust him. Now the issue of trust broke in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve did not trust the word of the Lord and listened to the voice of the serpent. And has been listening to the voice of the serpent ever since, thinking and bringing into question the things of God. But God wants us to trust in him. And the Bible gives us an opportunity to reconnect to the, our ability to trust in him and his promises he has made to us. We are told not to be dismayed of the king of Assyria. Now this king of Assyria, he represents all of our enemies, every enemy, any enemy, every enemy, every situation, situation you face. He represents every single one of them. What is it to be dismayed? To be dismayed is to be overwhelmed so as to lose the ability to act. Fear has so gripped you. Anxiety has so taken hold of you that you're dismayed. That you're, you just don't know what to do. You just don't know how to do it. You just look and gasp and, and, and you can't act because you've been nullified in your ability to do what you need to do. We are told to not be afraid of the horde. And the horde, as it referenced in 2 Chronicles, who are the horde that are with the king of Syria? Who are the horde? They are those who agree with our enemies, those who, who agree with our enemies to do what is wrong, to do what is bad, to do what is evil, to not trust in the Lord, but to trust in ourselves, to trust in our senses, to trust in the, the wisdom of men, to trust in the ideas of men. He says, the hordes are those and we don't, mustn't be afraid of those either. Because, why? God is with us to fight our battles. God is with us. So how does God fight our battles? 2 Chronicles 20, 15, 17 says, The battle is mine, says the Lord. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because God is with you. God wants us to stand still in him and trust him no matter what we're facing, even death. Because when we put our trust in God, we will not be disappointed. He finishes this chapter by saying, O oh Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. The promise, tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord your God is with you. Is the Lord your God with you, brothers and sisters? Yes. Is the Lord your God with you, brothers and sisters? Yes. Then if the Lord your God is with you, who can be against you? No weapon formed or army or king can be able to stand against the Lord and his anointed. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. If the Lord your God is with you, then all will be well with you if you align yourself to him. The people, the people relied 
on the words of Hezekiah. What is it to rely on the words of the king? It's to rely on and trust in his authority. To rely on and trust in his authority. Now God's either a liar or he's telling the truth when he makes the promises to us. I vote for him telling the truth. He has never let me down. He has never disappointed me. He has always kept his word to me. Even when I have abandoned him, he has never disappointed me. And so trusting in Hezekiah is like trusting in and relying on the word of the king. Trust in his authority. Did Hezekiah love God? Did he love God? Yes. Hezekiah chose God's way instead of the, the immorality of his culture. God prospered King Hezekiah because of his obedience to him. And genuine love and obedience for the Lord gained Hezekiah 15 more years of his life. He had a sickness, but he trusted in the promise of the prophet. And as a result, he retained 15 more years of life. Sadly, after that 15 years, the pride of Hezekiah got the better of him and he thought he could get through life without God. And sadly, he lost his way. But trusting in God is where our victory can be found. There's a scripture that says that we need faith to move mountains. Faith to move all mountains is a conviction of the truth that God's promises can be trusted in. And so the examples that I gave you are an opportunity for you to see God when you're in those various predicaments in order to be able to equip yourself like Josh is being equipped in order to be able to stand firm as he wins a battle for his mum. To have a conviction of the truth of God's promises. Jeremiah 32, 27 says this, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me. Let me ask you that. Is anything too hard for God? Can God do anything he wants to? So that means God can do anything you ask him. Anything that's according to his word. I know there are a lot of airy, fairy, peculiar Christians out there that make lots of silly declarations about uh, lots of money and lots of pleasures and lots of... But I'm not talking about those foolish things. That's why I gave you so many examples. And I didn't even complete them. I'm talking about the reality of the promises that God has made to us in order to equip us to win the battles against the journey as we go through our lives. The battle of faith, the battle of standing firm, the battle of trusting in our God. So holding, so holding God's hand in our time of need is a wonderful blessing that God has given to us. The Bible's there for you to read. The promises are there for you to discover. Go and read it. Go and discover it. Praise God for such provision of his word. What a helping hand the scripture has provided us who believe in him. They reveal God is reaching out his strong hand, bigger than Joshua's strong muscles, but bring it, reaching out God's strong hand, with his loving hand, of God, loving hand, and taking our weak our trembling hands. They reveal God is reaching out his strong and loving hand to grasp our weak and trembling hands. God understands how we feel. God understands the difficulties that we face. God understands that. He is a father. Of course he understands that. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Comforter will bring to your remembrance the appropriate promises from his word to comfort you and to help you. So keep your spirit full of God's promises and, they, and there will be no room for doubt, fear, frustration and discouragement. Problems will be solved as the light disperses the darkness. Learn to talk faith in his word, to think faith from his word and to live faith in his word. And in the face of every discouragement, plant yourselves 
of the promises of God. So we might ask the question, why aren't we then, if all these things are available to us, why aren't we then finding God's help when we need it? And many would give a testimony that they can't find God when they need him. Every one of these promises is an invitation to us, to you and me, to use in prayer. Every one of these promises is an invitation to use in prayer. They cannot help you, help us, unless we apply them by faith and prayer. All of the promises that God makes to us will be nullified to us unless we exercise faith in the promises to release us from whatever enemy we're facing at that time. And the, sadly, the vast majority of the Church of Jesus Christ have never learned to use the promises in the Bible in prayer to gain victories that God wants to bring to them. Unlocking heaven's storehouse is essential if we're going to gain victory. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. But having the right key does not open the lock. Only as you use it will the lock open for you. So God has given us the way to victory and we as people of faith need to agree with God, align ourselves with God so that we gain those victories that he wants to bring in our lives. And the victories I've said are good things, not silly things. Good things, God things, right things, pure things. So find the promises of God in the Bible. And when you get a promise, do your part by the grace of God. Meet the conditions of the promises that you read. One important factor is to believe with your heart, with your spirit. Because if you don't believe and receive into your spirit, you won't get the conviction that the promise is true. That God will do for you exactly what he says he will do for you from those promises. Take the promises of the Lord in prayer. Take the promises to the Lord in prayer. Ask him to do for you as specified in the promises. As you ask God to fulfill his promise, believe that he has at that moment as you have asked him, given to you the request that you've asked for. Believe that you have received what, what you've asked for. Jesus says you have to ask believing with thanksgiving. We have to believe before we get it. Now this kind of prayer will revolutionise your life. You can ask God for peace, help, courage, strength and victory and more. And always receive his blessings. If you ask. You know, the other day I had a little joke to myself. I don't know, I was talking to someone. But uh, I was saying to someone, have you ever gone to God and said to God, oh, yeah, you come, as a kid, come home from, from school and said to God, Dad, please feed me tonight. Please give me some tea. Please give me some dinner. You know, or, or, or you said, you know, you, you've kind of, Mum, please buy me a pair of shoes. Please... Do, do, do parents, do children do that to parents? They don't. They trust their parents in order to provide for them. And, and we need to start thinking more positively about God's blessing and provision to us as a Heavenly Father. He wants to take care of us, but He needs for us to trust Him. Debbie said in the week, she made a reference about a resetting button that we get on the computer. Debbie's word, return to factory setting. Return to factory setting. That's the reset button. Now if you ever do that on a computer, and I have over the years a few times, it always comes up with this warning. It says this, you get this warning. Do you want to lose everything that you've got on that computer? Do you want to lose everything? Brothers and sisters, you have to press yes to lose everything that you were in order to be able to be in a position for God to reinvest in you. 
So brothers and sisters, God wants you to press yes to you being a new person and letting go of the old. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to reverse what Adam did. He wants you to put your trust in him, him and his word. Only as we do that and let go can we start to receive a new fresh input from God. An input that will transform our souls and our lives. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Morning. Yeah, great, wonderful. Just thinking, oh, fear, fear and not. And, and I know there's th 365 times in the, it says in the Bible, fear not. It's like one for every day, isn't it? It could be. But it's, it's, that, it's that need to continuously, for me anyway, just continuously battle against fear and anxiety. It's all these things of life, all these frenemies, all these things that have become so entrenched and encamped. And Father, we, I just have to speak against that and have strength and courage to know that you will bring me through all of my stuff, all of, all, all of these things that want to hold me back, all these incredible, wonderful Bible scriptures that Paul shared with us that gives us encouragement and, and strength and joy, and this desire, it brings a desire to want to get into the Bible and to know your word and to have these promises in my heart, Lord, so we know that when we have any battles that we need to go through, we've got your word in, in our heart and we can draw, draw on your promises. We can draw on all that you, all these good things that you say, and uh, we're not lost in in. Oh, will I do this? Shall I do that? We will know. We can sound strong in your word. So, Father, thank you for that. Strong in spirit, I think Paul said earlier, to be strong in spirit and strong in our emotions, and uh, and to have all these things and to bring victory into our lives. And as we go out of here today, Lord, about our business, our daily lives, we know that we can just pause whenever we need to and just reach in to that inner place, to that spirit and know your peace. Yeah. And, and know that there is victory in you. And we trust you. And we believe your word. Thank and thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, so um, this is Jesse and Max, those who don't know. And they're getting married in September. They're, she's our daughter and he's going to be our new son. So we just want to give them a blessing today. <laughs> thank you. And uh, so, uh, Gail... And, uh, and, and it's just stand up a minute. And uh, so these are two getting baptised. Just want to bless them. <laughs> and uh, pray that uh, you come along and uh, support them on that special day. Um, and uh, so tomorrow, uh, well this week, normal things going on. Um, praise the Lord. Have a great week, uh, those on Zoom. Uh, don't forget, we were, we're going to be uh, opening up church soon, uh, as normal. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, so uh, just wait for tomorrow's announcement but um, yeah it's all going to be uh, changing all going to be coming back to, to what we might call some sort of form of normal and so we praise the Lord for that and don't forget as well Emma's uh, Beauty for Ashes concert so it, it, she, she's, we prayed didn't we about a, a singer yes. and she's got a singer yeah. she's got a, so, so we prayed she had a singer to support her in, in her act and then uh, he went AWOL and then she didn't have a singer and then in a very short period of time, God has provided a new singer for us. So I just want to give the Lord a blessing. Yeah. Look at our Thank you, Lord. And uh, so uh, enjoy, uh, go home, be blessed, have a great week. And uh, 
Uh, really enjoyed the football match tonight. And uh, 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 made, made the white team win. Yeah. Made the white team. Made the white team. England. Yeah. <laughs>